What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is your first time here. My name is Israel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's talk about this video. Let's get it over with. Let's share this information and let me show you guys how I do it. All right. So Zach Morris, the dude is a freaking goat. There's, I mean, there you can, you can argue with his track record. Like this dude. All right. First, I was in AMC under $4, technically because of him. He was calling AMC like at the $2 area. So let's just see amc let's call riot i like eight dollars cei with a thousand percent return dats from four dollars to like 15 16 wish aht yeah some of them crashed but if you got in at the right spot you would have banked so it's not his fault it was your fault is you if you lost money because you probably chased then got faked out and sold for a loss and then chased again and got faked out on the dip and that's usually how it goes all right so people go and bitch and oh you pump this but no no it's your freaking fault you played it stupid but that's okay that's what we're here for we're here to learn okay so f cell friday action was really good i was calling it on twitter in the morning that the buying pressure on the tape was steady you could see the buyers were on point pushing this thing up run into resistance manipulation started then after hours from what i hear uh, zach posted on that chat that he was swinging this for looking for a plug type of move and i'm referring to plug energy now ripped back up after he posted that guys zach he he can move the market so right he brings monster volume on any of his calls also something to know when he calls something like this, when, when when he said I'm swinging this, he's not looking for a 20, 50 cent a pop. He's looking for a 200, 300 percent return. Okay, but now, how I play that? I found out that he was in after the market was closed. I don't have a position on FSL, and uh, I mean I do like the future of the company. The energy sector is hot. FSL got uh, carbon capture too clean energy, a lot going on, government grants, etc. So I think it could run. We already seen SL run to like $30 for like, from like five bucks. So I know he's got the gas and Zach brings in the, the NOS, then the nitrogen, the extra, the extra power. All right. So, but you gotta be smart. You gotta, you gotta be smart about it. You can just go in chase, especially if you don't have conviction, you don't know why you're buying. You don't know why you are doing it. Because you will be the first one that gets faked out on a dip, sells for a loss, then it starts ripping, you chase back in, get faked out again on a dip for a loss, and you already know the deal, and then you go on Twitter and start crying. So let's try to avoid that. Now, we got this intraday resistance, okay? This, this is how I look at the how I look at it after Zach touches it. You know, gives it the, the Midas touch. Run, something that I've come to find out every time he calls something automatically spikes to the next resistance area. It's just not a random spike. It normally spikes to the next resistance area and that is exactly what F cell did. Okay. So now if you see, you got this pretty much resistance on intraday at the 780, 790 level, it came right back to it. Yeah, it broke it, came back down, and it kind of like settled right here. Given a very nice strong close, so I expect the product to gap up over 8 on Monday. We'll see about that. But you got intraday resistance. Do you want to buy there? Absolutely fucking not. I want to get in, but I am not buying in at resistance. Now, the first thing I do is I go to a bigger time frame. Let's check out the daily chart on f -cell. Oh, look, 789 is just not an intraday resistance level. It's actually... A long ass going all the way back here on the daily chart. So you already know that level is gonna be is gonna be a strong resistance. Okay. So that's what you have to look at because if you just bought a 789, 790, you bought at an intraday major resistance level at a big pivot point, and that's not where you want to buy at unless you are just a YOLO type guy and you know you just throw your account and whatever. But ideally, you don't want to buy there, okay? So that's this is what I would do, okay? I go to the daily. It seems to have bottomed out on this $6 level. 
I'm, I start drawing my, my, my lines, this very nice uptrend here, okay? And now I zoom in a little bit, and this will be my ideal entry right here on a retest of this trend line. That will be my ideal entry. But now that's seven, $7.20, cents. it's almost at $8. That might not happen. That pullback might not be there, especially with Zach now in the stock, okay? So let's take it to the hourly chart. Let's zoom out. Okay, so let's say that it doesn't come all the way to my entry point. What do I want to see here, guys? I want to see that 788, 790 level become support. Let's say, let's go intraday. Let's say on Monday, right? On Monday, it opens, it gaps up, breaks this level. I'm not going to buy as it breaks this big resistance level. No. I, am, I want to see a break of this level, okay? I want to see a break of this level. And then I want to see a retest of this level. And I want to see this. go from resistance to support because that is normally a confirmation to buy that would be my buying signal if i don't get that nice dip that i would like i will probably have some bits out there and start some intraday levels probably 747 50 maybe one small bit at vwap in case it gives us that nice washout in the morning but in case that doesn't happen I want to see this. I want to see that resistance level break and it's gonna pull back to test it. Believe me, it will, okay? Believe me, it will. Now, another thing that I like to look at, I like to add some standard deviation lines to my chart and see how overextended it is. So now here, let's get rid of the lines. See what happens. When it gets close to the standard deviation line, pulls back and settle right on the median. These standard deviation lines will save you so much freaking money. Okay, I promise you, they will save you so much money. Now, if it rips, I want to pay attention how overextended is getting. The, the closer it gets to the top standard deviation line, believe me, it will pull back to the median. Believe me, it will pull back to the median. You see this? It will pull back, okay? So there is not reason to chase, guys. Yes, I know FOMO is like the worst enemy of a new trader or a new investor because you wanna get that skin in the game right away, okay? You, you wanna get it in right away, but believe me that long term, it will not pay out to be what you think it is. You have to be patient, okay? You have to be patient. And Zach himself says it all the time, all the time. When he gives out a call, don't get in when you see the tweet because you are probably buying into resistance. Let it come back down. Let it pull back. Wait till the following day and get that morning washout into support. But you want to buy at a support level. You don't want to buy into resistance, which is normally where the stock goes after Zach calls it. Normally, automatically spikes to resistance. We've seen it on NXTP too. He, I, I guess he re, uh, retweeted something and uh, somebody assumed that he was in and the thing spiked and it came right back down. But he brings in the volume, keep that in mind. The dude has an outstanding track record. There is hundreds of thousands of people that are just waiting for him to tweet something, all right? Hundreds of thousands of people just waiting for him to tweet something. He can tweet a picture of a third and he's gonna get 1,500 retweets in the first hour without meaning anything, because <laughs> that's just the way it is. So, let it pull back, okay? If you're gonna get anything out of this video, when he calls something, it will spike. 100% of the time, let it pull back to support before you buy. If you bought right here, 
at the 780 at this level. I really hope the best for you, but keep in mind that you might be red for a little bit because that's the problem. People chase his call buy at the resistance level that the stock is get like magneted to he gets pulled to that resistance as soon as he calls it because he brings in the volume then people especially newer guys and that's the the sad part newer guys are loading up their accounts right here okay then on monday the market opens it pulls back to 720 all those guys are freaking out, market selling everything, making the stock go down another 3%. And then everybody goes on Twitter and start calling Zach names and it's Zach's fault and everything. Just to 10 minutes after that, see the stock right back at 790 and breaking out of eight. And then you sold for a loss and then it's like a, like a dark spiral of losses because they sold for a loss, they pissed, fuck Zach. I hate him. Oh my goodness. Then the stock starts ripping up. Oh shit, it's happening. They buy at the next resistance level. The stock pulls back to retest it. Oh my god, I got stopped out. Sack socks again. Blah, blah, blah. We already seen this movie like 1500 times. And the sad truth is if you play it the smart way, based on the technicals, you will make money 99.8% of the times. You just have to make sure you're locking in profits, make sure you're buying at support, and take profits as it breaks significant levels. Let's say, for example, you are in the low $7. If you get that breakout of $798, which is a daily resistance, intraday resistance on the hourly, once it breaks that, lock in some profits. Locking some profits on the break of that resistance area and then add them back on the retest. You just have to be smart about it. You just have to be smart about it. Instead of just buying a resistance and selling a support, that's no, nobody. You gotta, it's the other way around. It's, it's the other way, okay? It's the other way around. And that's it, guys. Not too hard. Not too hard. You just gotta keep the FOMO away from you and play it without emotions. You have to be able to watch a stock run without you and be okay with it. You have to be, you have to be okay with it. And believe me, it, it sucks and it's hard, especially when you are just like starting out. But you have to take the emotions out of it. Because uh, if you can stand a stock running without you, you are probably going to buy at the top and then get stopped out at the bottom and watch it reverse and go back to the top. And that's what it is, guys. So I hope you guys take something out of this video and learn something. And uh, again, it's not too hard. Just take the emotions out of it. Look at the chart. Where's the support? What is the resistance? And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more. Love you guys. I'll see you with another video on Monday.